The Saga of Hervor and Heiderach, translated by Jackson Crawford. Chapter 4 Bjarmar's daughter Swova was pregnant and gave birth to an especially beautiful girl. She was sprinkled with water and given a name and called Hervor. She grew up with the Jarl and was as strong as men are. When she came of age, she was more interested in archery and shields and swords than in weaving or tapestries. And she more often did evil than good. And when she was banned from doing this, she went into the forests and killed men for their money. When the Jarl learned about this robber, he went there with his army and captured Herbor and brought her home with him. And she then stayed at home for a while. On one occasion, when Hervor stood outside, near where some slaves were, she treated them as evilly as she usually treated everyone. But then one of the slaves said, Hervor, you only want to do evil, and evil is all we expect from you. And that is why the Jarl forbids anyone from telling you who your father was, because he thinks it would be shameful for you to know it. It was the worst slave who lay beside his daughter, and you are their child. Hervor became furious at these words, and she went before the Jarl and said, I don't have to praise our good name, though mother got Frothmar's favor. I thought my father had some courage, but now I'm told he was a pig herder. The Jarl said, a great lie has been told with too little truth. Your father was counted a bold man among men. On Guntir's hall stands, piled out of earth, down in Samsu, on the island's south end. She said, Now I am eager, foster father, to visit my departed famous kinsmen. They must have owned many riches. I will inherit them unless I die first. First, I will quickly take off the soft linen from around my hair before I depart. It is vitally important that tomorrow I must have a man's shirt and cloak tailored for me. Afterward, Hervor spoke with her mother and said, You wise woman, make it all for me as well as you can, as you would for a son. The truth came to me while I slept, I will not have joy here for a little while. Then she went alone and took for herself a man's equipment and weapons. And she went to where some Vikings were and went with them for a while and called herself Hervarth. A little later this Hervarth became leader of the group and when they came to Samsu, Hervor told her men that she wanted to go out on the island and that there was hope of treasure in the grave. But all her warriors spoke against it, telling her that there were such evil spirits walking there day and night, that it was worse to be there in the daytime than it was to be out at night in other places. Soon enough, the anchor was dropped, and Hervor got into a boat and rowed to land, and came to shore in Munarvog at the same time the sun was setting, and there she met a man watching a herd. He said, What kind of person is walking on this island? Be quick and go back to where you're staying. She said, I will not go to where I'm staying, because I don't know the island's residence. Tell me now, before we part, where are the graves of Hjorvar, said the lie. He said, Don't ask about that. You are not wise, friend of Vikings. You've gone astray. We ought to go as quickly as our feet will take us. Everything in this place is hateful to humans. She said, I wouldn't care to humor cowardice, even if this whole island were in flame. Such fighters as we are, let's not fear any little things. Tell me what I asked. He said, anyone would be a fool to go farther especially someone going alone into such grim darkness. 
There are embers flying, the grave mounds open. Earth and swamp burn alike. Let's run faster. Then he started running home to his farm, and parted from her in this way. Now the next thing Hedvor saw out on the island was the gray fire burning. She went that way and feared nothing, though all the graves were in her path. She waded forward into these fires as though into darkness, until she came to the grave of the berserkers. Then she said, Wake up, Angantyr. Hervor awakes you, the only daughter born to you in Swalva. Give me from your grave your sharp-edged blade, the one that dwarves made for Sigurlami. Hervarth, Hjorvarth, Hrani, Angantyr. I awake you all under these tree roots, with helmet and armor and sharp sword, with shield and harness and reddened spear. The sons of Arngrim are much reduced, those cruel kinsmen are nearly dust now, while none of the sons of Uyvhura will speak with me in Munarvod. Hervar, Thjorvar, Thrani, Angantyr, may you all feel as though your ribs had ants between them as you rot in your grave. Unless you give me that sword that Dvalin made, it doesn't befit ghosts to bear a fine weapon. Then Angantyr said, My daughter Hervor, why do you call out so? You are only welcoming your own evil doom. You've gone insane, you're out of your wits, thinking wildly when you wake up dead men. It wasn't my father who buried me, nor other kinsmen. Two men who lived took Tyrving, but of them, only one lives now. She said, You don't speak true. May a god leave you to sit whole in your grave if you don't have Tyrving with you. You are reluctant to deliver the inheritance to your only child. Then the grave mound opened, and it was as though fire and flame were all over the grave. Then Anguntyr said, Hell's gate draws up, the grave mounds open, everything is in flame on the island around. It's an evil sight to look out of the grave. Hurry back, young lady, go back to your ships. She answered, You can't burn those flames so bright at night that the fires will terrify me. This woman's heart will never tremble, even if she sees a ghost stand before this door. The Nongantir said, I'll tell you, Hervor, listen to me now, wise daughter. Hear what will happen. Tyrving will destroy all of your family, girl, if you can believe it. You will have a son who later will have Tyrving and have faith in his strength. Men will call that man Heirek. He will be the most powerful under the sun's domain. Then Hervor said, I seemed to be a human woman before I decided to seek your hall. Now give me, from out of your grave, the sword that hates armor, the one dangerous to shields, the killer of Hjolmar. Then Angantyr said, Hjolmar's killer lies beneath my shoulders, covered completely by flames. I know of no woman above the earth who would dare to hold that sword in hand. Hervor said, I will keep the sharp sword and take it in hand and hold it. I do not fear burning flame. And now the fire seems to flicker as I watch it. Then Angantyr said, You are a fool, Hervor, but you have courage. Rush in upon the fire with your eyes open. I would happily give you the sword from my grave, you young girl. I cannot deny your request. Hervor said, you did well, son of Vikings, when you gave me the sword from your grave. I think it's better now, Lord, to have the sword than to win the whole of Norway for my kingdom. Angantyr said, You don't know it, but you lost in this matter, fully doomed woman. Why do you rejoice? Tyrving will destroy all of your family, girl, if you can believe it. She said, I will go to the ships. Now this girl is in good spirits. I care little, friend of princes, how my sons may later clash. 
he said, You'll own it and love it long. You'll keep Yolmar's killer in a secret place. Don't touch the edges. There's poison on both. It's worse for human life than the cutting blade. Farewell, daughter. I'd rather have given you twelve men's lives, power and strength, everything good that Arngrim's sons left behind of themselves, if you could believe it. She said, I'm ready to leave. May you all dwell whole in the grave, and I will hurry away. I seem more than anything to be between worlds, while around me there are fires burning. Then she went to the ships, and when the day came, she saw that the ships were gone. The Vikings had been afraid of the noises and fires on the island. Then she found transportation away, and nothing is known about her journey before she came to Guthmund at Glossisfeller. And she stayed there at Glossisfeller through the winter, and continued to call herself Hedvarth. Two sagas of mythical heroes, Hervor and Haithrek, and Rolf Kraki and his champions, translated by Jackson Crawford, available October 19th, 2021, from Hackett Publishing Company. For now, from beautiful Wyoming, let me wish you all the best. <laughs>